Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day. Today we're going to be talking about eating healthy on a college budget and why it's so important. My name is Sydney. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Anuka. We'll get started. So why does this matter and what's the big deal? Uh, this pie chart right here is going to illustrate that um, those facts for you laid out in numbers. So the blue section, 65% of students, the causes of weight gain in college is because of food. 9% uh, of that is beer and drunk eating, and 14% um, of that is lack of exercise. So as you can see, this is a big problem. We've all probably suffered from a little bit of weight gain going off into college. Um, eating healthier can lead us to better brain function, and that's why we see that this is so important. We can do better in our schoolwork if we just eat better foods. Um, we get omega-3s from things like salmon and uh, spinach and folic acid from things like walnuts and orange juice. And these are really important for brain function, for if we want to have enough energy through the day or have enough you know, function just overall in our bodies to be able to think during our tests and homework. Uh, we can also save money. By saving money with our food, we can reduce stress. Um, it's been shown that money is the number one stressor in everyone, so we really want to reduce that and food should be the least of our worries. We should be smart with our food buying. Creating good habits for the future is also a big reason why we want to be able to save money and eat better. Um, you know, we want to be able to get into those habits so that we will always stay in shape throughout our lives and we can also show our kids those habits, maybe get them to develop those habits as well. Being overweight can cause numerous health issues, things like heart disease and diabetes. We want to try to avoid these. So we wanted to help you guys with a few facts, maybe see what um, can help you with saving money at the same time eating healthy. Um, I had a, my friend's mom was diagnosed with cancer and she was actually about to start chemotherapy <coughs> and the doctor told her you cannot eat raw fruits and vegetables on chemotherapy because it will actually counteract the chemotherapy, which that boggled my mind that raw fruits and veggies from the ground can counteract one of the strongest medications that we have. So she actually decided to not go on the chemotherapy and to just eat a raw diet, and she's actually in remission now. So that just shows you, you know, things that a healthy diet can do for you. Um, Auburn University followed 131 students. 70% by sen senior year have put on weight. 31% of those were considered overweight. So this is a big problem, and we're going to show you how to solve it. Okay, so first let's discuss some of the causes. So how many of you guys eat, uh, eat out three times a week? Yeah, raise his hand. Twice a week? Once a week? Yeah. So a lot of us, right? So one of the biggest problems is that fast food that we all eat out because we don't have time in our day. Um, late night snacks and meals or food around your dorm or apartment, usually junk food because it's something that's easy and quick to go between classes. Um, also, unhealthy meal plans at UTD. We have, you know, like uh, those meal plans that are really expensive, but like <laughs> a lot of sugar and everything else in that. Um, and then also like cheap fast food coupons that we find and then we're like, oh, Kidova, like Tuesday or whatever, let's go and let's go eat out there. Um, some of the other problems are alcohol, uh, energy drinks, skipping your meals, that's unhealthy for you and it does not help you with your brain function throughout the day. Little to no exercise, a lack of sleep or strange sleeping schedules, and then also just a lack of education on nutrition. Um, I see it's like blocking it, but <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so. This <laughs> pizza is not a substitute for the food pyramid. Um, but what is, let's let's talk about the food pyramid. So you want to have a very small amount of fats, oils, um, things like that. Uh, two servings of mi meat, fish, beans, eggs, your proteins. Three servings of milk, cheese, and yogurt. Um, four or more servings of fruits and vegetables. Six or more servings of bread, cereals, and potatoes. And then eight cups of water a day. Um, so I, we created this uh, weekly, a week budget on $50, and we uh, give you your shopping list, and then in a few moments I'll talk about some recipes you can create. So some of the things on our shopping list is box of spaghetti noodles, um, sliced, loaf, sliced bread, bell peppers, broccoli, apples, bananas, beans, peanut butter, carrots, onions, pasta sauce, um, things of that nature, and it doesn't like egg. So um, for breakfast, we could have eggs on top of toast, or maybe eggs with potatoes and veggies, um, some oatmeal with peanut butter and sliced bananas and apples, and there's a few more. Um, for lunch, 
We can have peanut butter and banana sandwich. We can have a loaded uh, potato with some veggies in there. Um, toasted cheese sandwich, egg salad sandwich, and some fruit on the side if you're getting hungry. Um, for dinner, we can have spaghetti with sauce and roasted veggies. We could have veggie stir fry, grilled vegetables, veggie quesadillas, crock pot soup, veggie burgers. So there's a lot of recipes you can create on this $50 budget, and that's, that is very cheap. Like, that shouldn't be too much money. So, I'm going to show you a short little video of some tips. Um, when you go grocery shopping, this guy's actually in Whole Foods, so that's commonly known as a very expensive grocery store. <laughs> the, um, funny. the volume was turned off last time we were in here, so make sure your volume's on. Massachusetts, this year by seven. And tips for shopping on a budget. First, buy in bulk. Yes, size does matter. If I buy this individual portion of chicken, it's five forty nine pounds. But if I buy this family size pack and then freeze what I don't eat, it drops to four twenty nine pounds. Second, and on a similar note, buy the whole darn case. We'll give you a 10% discount at the register. If you're going to eat it all anyway, then why not save some dead presidents? And who doesn't love a case of garbanzo beans? No? Okay. Third, buy in season. When fruits and veggies are in season, they don't need to be flown halfway around the world. Plus, it helps local farmers. Yeah. Fourth, buy the store brand. Each supermarket has a store brand. At Whole Foods Market, it's called 365, and it is the same price all year round. This store brand product is a few dollars cheaper, and it totally tastes exactly the same. Totally good. Wait, is this, is this dog food? Fifth, buy frozen fruits and veggies. This container of fresh raspberries is $4.99. This bag of frozen raspberries, on the other hand, is a couple bucks cheaper and contains twice as many. People often think that fresh is better from a nutritional standpoint. That is not always true because frozen fruits and vegetables are often flash frozen at their peak of freshness. They often contain even more nutrients than their fresh alternatives. Sixth, write out your list and then stick to that list. It helps prevent making expensive or unhealthy impulse buys. That on the cake might look good in the case, but it is not on the list. Seventh, and last but not least, know what's on sale and incorporate that into your shopping list. At this store, they have monthly matching sales that are usually 50% off. That is huge. And most markets offer coupons and value guides like these. And really, at the end of the day, you have to talk about the hidden costs of cheap, unhealthy food. If you put unhealthy foods into your body, then you pay the price in a different way for your health. You might have increased healthcare costs or time that you miss from work. That bonbon might be 99 cents, but it comes with a free for nothing side of type 2 diabetes. In the comments below, share some of your best tips for shopping health and at a budget. I'll check them out. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. And make sure you close out. <laughs> Those were just some really cool tips. We thought the raspberry packs were really cool. Turn up, turn down your volume. The frozen, uh, the frozen raspberries were freeze or flash frozen at the peak of their freshness. I would always think that fresh raspberries are the freshest um, pick, but the frozen are actually cheaper and they might be a better choice. Alright, so, so the next thing we're going to talk about is some of the resources we have at hand to make sure that we eat healthy but also stay on a budget. Alright, so one of the things that I really like is this website called Supercook. So let me show you what this is. So what Supercook is, basically you go to this website and first it's going to be empty here, there's going to be nothing. And what you can do is it gives you a list of suggestions of ingredients and you can pretty much pick the ingredients you already have at hand. So you don't have to think about like, oh, I need to go out and buy this to make a meal, but just kind of pick the things you already have. Some of the things that I put in there is like beans, butter, chicken broth, rice, spinach, you know, some of the things we might already have. So can you guys name some few things that's already in your pantry? Sausage. Sausage? Okay. <laughs> what else? Anything else? That's all I got. <laughs> that's all I got? Okay. Crackers. Crackers? Okay. Okay, so like, as you add more things, the more recipes pop up. Before it was like $200 went to like $300 and then went to $1,000. See, like there's so many recipes and you can just follow them and if you click on one, it'll show you like just the ingredients that you listed. So you have these ingredients already on hand. So you don't have to worry about buying new ingredients to make a meal. So that makes you, that takes the stress out a little bit. That way you can actually just look in your pantry and be like, oh, I have this, 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 and I can make this. All right? So the next thing, we're going to talk about is actually tracking your calories. So something, I don't know, I'm skinny, okay, and I need to like kind of eat more. And whenever I'm eating, I don't realize that some of the food I'm eating actually has too much fat in it and not enough protein, or sometimes like, I'm not even eating enough. Like I'm walking around a lot and that's taking away my calorie intake. 
So this app called MyFitnessPal.com is actually a really, really cool online news source and also an app that can track the food you eat. So as you go around eating like an apple a day or like your breakfast, you can put it in your calendar and it tracks how many calories you're eating and also tells you like whether you're fulfilling your protein requirement, your um, milk and all the stuff that was in your um, food pyramid. So you can see what you're lacking. For me, I noticed the most thing I was lacking was dairy in my diet because I don't drink a lot of milk. So whenever I saw that, it kind of tells me like, oh, hey, you, you haven't eaten any kind of dairy product today. So at the end of the night, I can be like, oh, I should drink some milk or something like that. So this helps you kind of stay on track and also see where you need to be. And it has like, if you download it, there's a lot of cool things about it where um, if you go on the app, there's a little scanner where you can scan barcodes and bring some like, nutrition facts on, on a food. So if it has too much sodium, you can be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't eat this or, you know, kind of figure out what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. Another thing that um, is kind of hard for us to uh, wrap our heads around is that we have to go out and you know, grocery shop. Grocery shopping, oh my god, it takes so much time out of our day. I feel like it's such a hassle. So some of the things that have made our lives so much easier is this like delivery methods. I don't know if you have heard of Amazon Prime now, but Amazon Prime now is basically for groceries and like household items. So if you go, if you already have the Prime account, you can just download this app. And then you can look up all these grocery stuff and like household, household goods and put it in your shopping cart and it will deliver to you free of charge. I mean, there is a limit. I think I can like spend around 35 bucks and then it gets delivered for free or you can pay shipping. But I just thought it was such a convenient thing, especially for us college students. Like sometimes I don't even get home till like 8, 9 and at that time I can't go out and buy something. I just eat something that's frozen and that's readily available. So if with Amazon Prime, like I can order it and have it delivered and then I have some uh, groceries already at hand. And for those who don't have uh, Amazon Prime, another cheap alternative is that Walmart just came up with this thing called Walmart Grocery Pickup. And basically what this is, is you go onto their website and you uh, you have an account and you uh, fill up your shopping basket with groceries. And it's going to be the same prices as uh, what Walmart has and it adds to your grocery basket. And for that too, the limit has to be like $35 worth of stuff. And basically what they'll do is um, package it and get it ready to go and you pay it for it online as well. And then you pick a time where you, it's more, most convenient for you to go and pick it up. Say like tomorrow at 3 p.m. would be most convenient. You pick up the slot and then they will have that food ready to go for you. And all you do is you go in, you show your receipt, and then they'll give you the food. So everything's already done and ready. So and that's just, you know, through computer and then you just pay for it. And all you have to do is go there and pick it up. And I just think that's like an amazing tool to have. And some of the, something else that we want to talk about is the fact that, you know, sometimes we go out, we tend to splurge. Okay, but think about it, like there's a lot of discounts out there that we should take ad advantage of. And like UTD has a lot of discounts. Like some of these links, um, if we can send you this PowerPoint, you can follow it. And UTD has all these discounts that you can go to. Same with Groupon. It also has like a, a group, uh, coupons from the area. Restaurant.com has the same thing. But keep in mind, whenever you go out to eat, make sure you're watching the calories that you're intake and also the nutrition that are in, in the food. Because a lot of times, we don't realize the amount of like calories we're intaking because this fast food, while they look like good and healthy, might not have too much sodium, too much oils and stuff like that. Another cool thing that you can use is things called Calorie King. And basically you can um, uh, go to Calorie King and then it'll pull up like all these like fast food restaurant chains and then you can um, click on the beverage or food you're going to eat and it'll break, break down everything that's there, like all the nutrition and stuff like that. So you can figure out what you should be eating when you should be. So what's the solution and how do we fix the problem? Uh, we should keep healthy snacks around our apartment at all time. I know that if I have chips or popcorn around my apartment, I can eat them and I'm gonna choose them over fruit any day. Uh, freeze your food so they will last longer. Buy um, you know, chicken breasts, you can freeze them, you can freeze fish and they'll last a lot longer. Um, embrace whole grains and beans, the, the cheap bulky items that will last a long time. Uh, rice lasts a really long time in your pantry or dried beans, canned beans, um, keeping those around is really good because th they also fill you up, just a little bit will fill you up. Eat the daily serving for each category in the food pyramid like we talked about. But pay attention to what you eat through the apps that Anupa was talking about and just really uh, look at what you're eating and is it good for your body. Uh, buy items you can use for multiple meals like the grains and the rice and the beans that we were talking about. You can take those almost into every meal. Eat on time, don't skip meals. I know we're tempted to do that with our studying or eat way too many meals with our studying. So just really pay attention to how many meals you're eating a day. Uh, plan your grocery chip trips. I know I'm a grazer. I like to walk around the grocery store and pick whatever looks nice. 
and that never ends up good. Things always end up going bad, and I don't eat them, or I just eat one of them, because um, I just saw it in the store, and it looks pretty. So also, be okay with eating leftovers. Um, it's okay to eat leftovers, and it's really cheap. It helps you save money, and the food can be good for three days long. So let us know if you have any questions.